I'm going to demonstrate setting up the Apache web server inside some Linux machines on VirtualBox and including setting up uh, HTTPS and the use of digital certificates. So currently I have running three Linux machines in VirtualBox, a client, a router and a server. I'm going to install Apache on the server and then use the client to test uh, web browsing on that. There are many different instructions online. We're using Ubuntu 16.04. Uh, one set of instructions for setting up uh, Apache on Ubuntu. DigitalOcean has some basic instructions so you can browse through there to see uh, the steps. They're uh, quite uh, simple to set up Apache. It's a little bit more complicated to set up the digital certificates. So let's go through it. And I have my window for my server here a basic Ubuntu install. The first thing we're going to do is install using apt Apache. And it's actually Apache version 2, so sudo apt install Apache. And I have my password. And it asks me, uh, do I really want to continue? There's a, a bunch of software that's going to be installed. And yes, I'm going to continue. And it will download and install Apache and set it up. And in fact, the web server will be up and running once this completes. And I'll bring up my client, and my client is connected to the server via router. And for that, we're gonna use a, a text-based web browser. So I'll actually, to just to test, install Lynx. Lynx is a, a simple text-based web browser, uh, and it's useful for quick testing when we only have the command line. So we can run links and specify the URL. And in this case, we're going to use the IP address of the server. And I'll run ifconfig on the server. And in my internal network, the IP address is 192.168.2.22. So that's the address I'll connect to. And it brings me to the Apache 2 default or Ubuntu default page. The, this is the page served by Apache by default. If you want to set up a website, you need to change those, uh, this index.html file and set up all your files in the appropriate directory. So it's up and running. That was simple. Uh, there's a couple of things we'll need to do to make it a little bit more convenient. But before we do that, uh, there are many directories relevant to Apache for setting it up on the server. I'll not explain them all now. The uh, different documentation will explain them. For example, if we scroll through, we can see uh, this explains the default web page, which we saw, but only the text version. And in step five here, it talks about the different directories which are relevant and files for configuration of the Apache server. For example, var www.html stores the actual web content. A lot of the configuration of the server are under the etc Apache 2 directory. I will not go through those now. We'll look at setting up a few other features in the server so we can test them. One thing of course what we did to access with a client is <clears throat> and I'll just quit out of links using Q. Yes I'm going to quit. We needed to supply the IP address which is not much fun sometimes we'd like to use a domain name. In my small internal network I don't have a DNS server but I can cheat a little bit by manually setting mappings of domain names to IP addresses, in particular on the client. And one way I can do that, I'm on the client, is I edit a file called etc slash hosts. And I can insert a mapping in here, insert the IP address of the server, and we'll say, let's create a domain name for our server. So this says on my client, if I ever try and access www.example.com, it'll be redirected to 192.168.2.22, which is my actual web server. 
So this is our local version with respect to the client of a DNS settings. We can add more in here uh, to the same IP address or to other IP addresses if we have them on our internal network. And this is only for the client, so we can in effect use any domain name that we choose. I'll save that, escape, write and quit. What that means is we can now use links, but we can specify a domain name. And my local host file will map that to the actual IP address of the server, and we get the same web page. So that's useful for testing when we want to test with domains that it's only in our internal network inside VirtualBox. Quit out of that. So that's it. We can, we've installed the Apache web server and we can uh, access that from a client. So now let's go back to our server and have a look at, in a bit more depth about the configuration. And again, the website here lists the different directories and files of relevance. So we'll go through some of those, not all of them. This is on the server first. If we change into var www.html and ls, we see this is where the web pages are stored. And we can have subdirectories, images, and so on in here. So this is the web content in this directory. And it's got a, a, a default uh, template web page which says welcome to Apache on Ubuntu. The Apache to Ubuntu default page. So when we create a website, we'll put our files inside here. The next directory of relevance, and I'll just clear and go to the top, is Apache 2 under the etc directory. And the main configuration of the web server is done via files within this directory, and they're primarily text files. And there's uh, multiple files, usually configuration files, entering in .conf, and there's further files or, or modules in some of the subdirectories. The first one, or the main one, is apache2.conf. We will not make any edits to it. Uh, you can browse through and read some of the comment, uh, some of the, the how it works, comments. But the com the main idea is that the web server is configured by directives. For example, although this one's commented out, the server root is the the parameter and the value given here is etc Apache two. If you want to change those values, you can remove the hash at the start and modify them. This file, initially, we don't need to modify. The, the default parameters are sufficient. But if you really want to optimize or, or specialize Apache, you may go into here and change some parameters. And it refers to other files, including ports.conf and files available in the subdirectories. There's links into those. One of them, which is uh, of relevance, is in the sites available subdirectory. And it's the default configuration of Apache web server and it's named 00default.com and we'll open that up and note it's read only we would need to use sudo to make changes to that at this stage I'm just viewing the, the configuration file here is where you're more likely to make the first configuration changes to your web server for example server admin gives the email address of the administrator it defaults to an app local host, but if you have a real domain, you would put the real email address of the admin here. And it specifies where the root of your web directory is. And that can be changed, of course. Uh, the location of error logs, uh, access or custom logs, and that's it in this case. And this is uh, in this virtual host set of directives. We can actually have on the same physical server multiple virtual hosts or multiple different websites for different domains. We'll see that there's another file in here, this default ssl.conf. This is the configuration for setting up HTTPS, which we'll go to shortly. We'll come back and we'll need to edit that file. Apache 
has extra features which are available in modules and the mods available list some of those modules currently in, uh, installed and there are different ways to enable those modules. We will enable the SSL module at a later stage. The other directory is the of, of uh, initial interest is where the logs are stored and that's under var log and there's a lot of operating system and software logs in here. The one of interest is Apache 2 subdirectory. And there's normally an access.log and an error log. And the access log is one of, of interest. It logs by default all accesses to the website. And it logs it in a, in a standard format where it keeps a record of who accessed the website at what date and time, what page they or uh, a path name they tried to get, and the response, the HTTP response code 200, the response size, and some information about the, the browser that accessed the website. We'll see over time as uh, multiple people access the website, this log can be quite useful for learning about how people access it. The error log is useful if there's things that go wrong in your web server. <clears throat> so they're the main locations where you get started with configuring uh, Apache. We're now going to set up uh, Apache to support HTTPS. So web browsers can connect to it in a secure manner using HTTPS. And it's not too hard to enable that on Apache, but the, the more complicated procedure is making sure Apache has a valid digital certificate. In the normal procedure, in a real server, what we would do is create a certificate for our server and then go to an external certificate authority to get that certificate uh, uh, signed. However, when we're using our internal network in VirtualBox and we want to do everything inside VirtualBox, we are not going to go out to an external authority. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own authority on my server and get that to sign the certificate for my web server. So I'm going to go through the steps of uh, creating a certificate for the authority, generating the authority, and then we'll create a certificate for the server and get the authority to sign that. So the first step here is creating a certificate for the authority. And I'm not going to explain the details of the algorithms like RSA and even the, the, how certificates provide security. That should be covered in a, a separate security unit. We're going to use common software for security operations called OpenSSL and it provides all the features we need to generate certificates, generate the authority, and sign certificates. And the mode we're going to use is we want to generate a public key pair for our authority, and we're going to use the algorithm, which is common, which is RSA. And I'm going to choose two options for the RSA algorithm, and the public key op First one is the RSA, when we generate a key pair, the length is important. Normally we can choose between 1024 bits, 2048 or 4096, where the longer, the more secure, although the slower it is to do uh, operations, crypt cryptographic operations that is. Another option that I'm going to choose is in RSA, it has a, uh, a public exponent. And I'm going to choose it to be this magic value 65537. And really, you need to go and study the details of the RSA algorithm to understand the significance of the public exponent and what the bits, the 2048 bits, refer to. But this should generate our key pair and I'm going to output that key pair to a file. And this is my key pair for the certificate authority. So I'll call the file CA key. And the file format we use is .pem, PEM. And there it's generated a, a key pair 
and we could go away and have a look at the details of that. Uh, for now, we'll leave it. We'll see uh, another example later. That's our certificate authority key pair. When you set up a server in the real case, you would normally not need to do that. You would go to an external CA, but we need to do it internally here. Now my authority needs to sign their own certificate. Again, not a normal step that we'd need on a web server. It would be done by an external authority. And what we do is we generate a request using a standard X509. As an input key, we're going to use our cakey.pm and we're going to output a file called cacertificate.pm and I'm going to say this certificate is going to be valid for three years, 1095 days. This is actually the certificate authority is going to sign their own uh, certificate. And what have I done wrong? A typo here, oh, I forgot a dot ca key dot pem. Note, I see this error opening, there's some error here. So be careful if you do see an error, you've probably got a typo like I did there. And this is the preferred, this is the success here. It now asks for information about my certificate authority. Country name or country code, Australia. State. And choose the one that's relevant for you. City, Cairns, organization name. This is for the certificate authority and essentially for the demo. You can choose whatever you like or use a university. Organizational unit, it's optional. I'll give the value certificate authority, but you could just press enter to skip that part. This is important, the common name, especially in a later step. Uh, normally it's a domain name, so I'll make up one for cqunie.edu and a made up email address. I say made up because again it's just internal to my VirtualBox network. I'm not going to be using this on the real internet, so it doesn't matter here. And that should be done. And I now have the key pair, the RSA key pair for the certificate authority and a self-signed certificate for the authority, which is going to be needed later. Now we're still setting up the authority. The next thing we need to do is set up some directories so that this authority can sign the web server certificate. And I'm going to quickly go and set up the directories. So I'm in my home directory, just make sure, CD home. And the directory structure here is quite important. Uh, if you get the, the directories wrong, then you'll have problems later. So the directory name comes from a configuration file. You could change it, but it's best just to follow these directory names. I'm going to make a directory called demo CA. And then I'm going to make a few directories under that called certs, another one called CRL and new certs, and these are needed, all of them are needed for our certificate authority. Private, and I need an empty file, so I'm going to touch a file in that, that directory called uh, index.txt. And I need another file, and it must contain the value 0 02. Sounds like some magic values, but it's all necessary so our certificate authority will have the necessary file set up to be able to sign and issue certificates for our web server. And I'll echo that into the serial file. And I'm going to move the CA cert file that we previously created into the demo CA directory and move the CA key file, our key pair, into the demo CA private directory. You need to go through those steps to prepare our certificate authority.
And the last step to prepare is to make a small change to a configuration. There's a file which we're going to edit as sudo using by, it's called user lib or usr lib ssl open ssl conf. This is the configuration for open ssl and in there is some settings that we're just going to change. We're looking for the settings which are to do with the CA policy and policy match. So scroll through. In fact, this specifies um, the default settings for all those directories that we just created. If you wanted to have different directories, you would have to change this first. Look through, scroll down for the CA policy, for the CA policy and policy match. The first three lines are saying when the certificate authority signs a web server certificate, they must match in terms of country name, state and organization name. Well, I'm going to be a little bit more free and allow uh, the state and the organization name to be optional. That's what I want to change to optional here. Saying that my certificate authority will only sign certificates which come from the same country, but they can come from a different state and a different organization. So let's change those two to optional. The rest should be okay. And I'll save that. Now our certificate authority should be ready and we have the demo CA directory set up. Don't touch that. When we sign certificates, there'll be that'll be automatically updated by OpenSSL. So that was setting up the certificate authority, which would normally be done externally. You wouldn't need to do that. The next steps are for the web server creating a key pair for the web server and a certificate request for the web server, giving that certificate request to the authority and the authority will issue us a certificate. And these are the steps that you would need, normally need to do for your web server. Again, for the web server now, we need to create a key pair for the server. Generate the key, public key pair, same algorithm, RSA, same options in fact, PK option RSA, sorry, uh, RSA key gen bits. We'll use the same length, 2048. It doesn't have to be the same length as the, as the CA. And we'll use the same, let's get the syntax right, PK opt, same option for the public key exponent to be this magic 65537. This public key exponent, by the name public, everyone can know this, so it doesn't matter if we, if other people know it's this value 65537. Everyone can use the same value, it doesn't create any security issues. And we're going to output that to a file, and I'll call it my private key. And I'm going to set up the server and give it a domain www.example.com. So that's what I'll name the file. So I remember this is the private key for www.example.com. If I wanted to host multiple servers or multiple websites on this one server, I could generate multiple private keys for different domains. And that's generated the private key. Now what we do is we generate a certificate signing request with OpenSSL, a request for a new, and the key that we're going to pass in is the one we just created, and we're going to output a certificate request for that same domain, and call that extension.csr for certificate signing request. This takes part of the private key, in, in particular the, the, the public key, and or takes the public key from the key pair and puts it into a format that we can deliver to the certificate authority, which will then issue us our certificate. And it asks for the similar information as the, when we did it for the um, certificate authority.
Remember, we set up the authority so that we need the same country name, but not necessarily the same state. But I have them. And I'm going to call mine example company. And I don't want a unit, but this is important. The common name must be your domain name that you're going to use for your website. I'm using www.example.com. In your demo, you can use another one. But importantly, when you set up your web server in Apache, you must use the same one. And uh, let's say webmaster at example.com for an email address. That's not important. Here it's asking, do you want to have some extra protection on this? No, we don't. Just press enter. We don't want a challenge password and I don't want an optional company name. That generates this certificate request. What we do now is we send that to the certificate authority. They will do some validation, check that it's actually us, and then issue a certificate if all is okay. In real life, that would be, say, sent to a, an external CA or uploaded to the website of a CA and some checks would take place. In our internal virtual network, the CA is on our server. So we don't actually have to send it. We can directly access it when we become the certificate authority. So that's what the web server needed to do. Now I'm going to switch hats and imagine I'm now the certificate authority. What I do, I take that certificate signing request and again using OpenSSL as a certificate authority, I take that as an input and I output a certificate. I issue the certificate. So this is the role of the certificate authority, which we need just inside our virtual network. Do we want to sign the certificate? We should check that values and make sure it's valid. Yes, I do. Uh, you want to commit this to your database, which updates the demo CA directory. Yes, I do. Database updated. That's good. And the thing that we need here is this certificate file. That's the one which is issued to our web server. Uh, when I set up the web server in a bit more depth soon, I'm going to also need the certificate authorities certificate, which we actually before put inside demo CA. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to get a copy. I'm, I'm going to rename it just so I'm clear. It's a certificate for our CA. That is the CA or certificate authority that signed our server certificate. A little bit different. Uh, it's the same. It's a .pem file, but I'm going to refer to it as a .crt file just to distinguish it when we set up Apache. We'll see where. And that's it in terms of generating these certificates. The next steps will be to set up Apache to use these certificates. Just before we proceed to make sure that everything's gone okay, we'll use OpenSSL to verify as the, using the certificate of our certificate authority to verify the certificate of our website. And this should present that the certificate is okay. Good. If you get okay, everything can, uh, you can continue. If you don't get okay, then probably one of the steps you've done is, is had a mistake prior to this. Just to summarize, we were going to need in the next steps, our certificate of our website and the certificate of our certificate authority. And we'll use them when we set up Apache to support HTTPS. So now let's uh, configure Apache to support these and use these certificates. So we need to put these certificates first, the web server certificate in directories which Apache are going to read by default. And in fact, I need to do this as sudo because the directory is under etc, which is only writable by administrator. And the subdirectory is SSL, and under that there's a directory called certs for certificates. 
So this is, if you have multiple websites, this is where you put the certificates of your web uh, sites. Uh, similar, we need to also put the certificate of the CA, our CA, in that same directory. And finally, the private key of our web server under the etc SSL private directory. So those are the three files, the uh, certificate of our web server, the certificate of our CA, put them into the cert subdirectory, and the private key of our web server into the private subdirectory. They are all needed by Apache. That private directory should uh, be protected because a private key, as the name suggests, must be kept private even from other people on this computer. And if we look in ETS, ETC SSL, the search directory is readable by all, the private directory is not readable by all. Okay, so that there's some protection. It's executable by this special group called SSL cert. You may want to change that, those permissions for uh, the file you just put in there to be more protected. But at this stage, it's sufficient for what we need in our demo. Okay, so we'll put the files so they'll be available to Apache. Now we need to configure Apache to uh, uh, use HTTPS. We'll go into the configuration directory. We'll just clear that. And we'll go into sites available. And recall there are two configuration files. One is for normal HTTP, this default.conf, and another one if we want to use SSL or HTTPS on our web server. And it's this second one we need to configure or we need to uh, modify. So I'll open that up with my editor. It has a default configuration. We just need to change a few settings in there. The first thing we'll do is we'll insert a server name and ours, I'm going to put in my domain name here and the port number which is used by HTTPS 443. So insert your server name if you've got a different domain name set it appropriately there. The other settings are normally OK as default except we we'll scroll down and note the difference between this and the normal default.conf this one has a lot of SSL directives. The SSL engine, which is used in HTTPS, is turned on. And a lot of uh, settings uh, for SSL. And these two are the ones really we want to change. I'll just scroll down. By default, this configuration file refers to these uh, template or fake snake oil certificates. Let's comment at these out. Uh, I did the wrong thing then, I'll just delete that, snake all. Uh, comment them out by inserting a hash at the start, we don't want them, we're going to add our own three in here. And again, it's important to get these correct. SSL certificate file is the first one, and we're going to refer to our three files that we put into the etc SSL directory. etc SSL, first one, certs, and the web server certificate. cert-www.example.com.pem. Double check, okay? SSL certificate file, there's no typos or spelling mistakes, and it refers to that exact uh, file. If you have a mistake here, most likely when you reload the Apache to, to support HTTPS, it will not work. This is the most likely place that you'll make mistakes. That's where I make them. Next one, certificate key file. This refers to our private key. And private key, priv key, www.example.com. PEM. And the third one refers to our certificate authorities certificate. 
CA certificate file etc SSL certs cert our CA dot CRT which is just the the CRT and the PEM are exactly the same format here it's just a tradition that the server will uh, refer to a dot CRT file so really there are uh, we add the server name in this configuration file document root other uh, logs are all the same the default values are su sufficient comment out the two snake oil directives and add in three directives directives the certificate file certificate key file and CA certificate file referring to our web server certificate our web server private key and our CA certificate and that's all the changes we need in this file we'll escape and save and now what we do if we go back a directory remember there are mods modules available we need to enable one of those mods or modules and Apache has a command to do that and as a sudo Apache 2 en enable module and it's called SSL it gives us some output saying we should restart Apache for this to take effect but we'll do that in a moment there's a couple of other things first we need to enable that site default SSL site if we look inside sites enabled there's one site enabled the, the normal default.conf and plain HTTP. We want to, as sudo apache2, enable site default-ssl. It says to reload the configuration, but if we look inside sites enabled now, it lists both of those sites. If you wanted to add another website for a different domain, then you could have a, a third configuration file or multiple configuration files, and you would enable them as well. Now we want to reload this configuration. Apache, when we make changes to the configuration, they don't take effect until we reload them. You can either re restart the whole server or simply reload, and we can use system control to do that. Reload Apache 2. If you want to restart the web server, it's simply restart Apache 2. In this case, it wouldn't matter it's preferable to reload because you don't interrupt existing connections or existing people accessing the server. And hopefully that prints nothing as an output. If it prints some error messages or some output, most likely you've got some syntax errors in your uh, default uh, SSL.configuration file. Now we want to test. Apache should be up and running. And I'll switch to my client. Let's just check, I can access normal HTTP website. Yes, I can get there. I'll queue to quit, yes. Now I'll change the URL to say HTTPS and try and access using HTTPS. Let's see what happens. Links reports an error, SSL error. The certificate is not trusted and it doesn't show me all the message. Do you really want to continue? And it's suggesting no, well, yeah, I trust the certificate. I'm. What could be happening here is a man in the middle attack. Uh, and we'll see how to overcome this in the moment and what the problem is. I'm going to press yes to continue. And now I have access to the web page. And I'm using HTTPS. You could confirm in other ways. So HTTPS is working. The web server is set up. It's all OK. But we do have this problem with our web browser when we try to access our www.example.com the web browser reports an error saying I've received a certificate but I can't validate that certificate I can't verify it and that's because the browser is not configured to be aware of our certificate authority uh, normally browsers are configured by default to be aware of common certificate authorities 
In a real network, I would get my web server certificate issued by a common certificate authority and we wouldn't have this error. We get this error because I created my own certificate authority. So next we'll go through the steps for overcoming this error. Just to be clear, the error is with the client. It's not any problem with the server setup. We need to make the client, the web browser in particular, aware that our CA can be trusted. And to do that, we need to get the certificate from the CA onto the client. And the certificate is on the server. I go home. The file we want is this one, certourca.crt. We need that on the client and set up in a special way. So back to the client, what I'm going to do is copy that certificate from the server to my client. And on the command line, I can use SCP, secure copy, where I specify the IP address of the server, 192.168.2.22, followed by the exact path where my certificate is stored and the name of that certificate. Be careful, in your case, your uh, username is probably different. So make sure you give yours uh, as the correct path. So that's whatever the value of this is on the server. So we're saying securely copy from 192.168.2.22 the file slash home slash Stephen slash cert lca.crt and don't forget copy it to this directory on my client. Don't forget the dot there, it's needed. Ask me for the password for Stephen at the server. I type it in and it copies it. And now I have this, the CA certificate on my client computer. Now I need to set up my uh, uh, browser or more, more generally in my operating system so it's aware of that certificate. And what we'll do, we'll make a directory on the client. This is specific to Ubuntu Linux. Other systems would do this in a different manner. Create this directory under user share CA certificates called extra for some extra certificates. Copy our CA certificate into that directory. And now reconfigure this CA certificates, this, uh, this listing of all the CA certificates to read into the new one. And to do that, sudo dpackage reconfigure CA certificates, which is the, the software package that keeps track of certificates of CAs. We're adding a new one to that. And yes, we would like to trust some new certificates. And it tries and finds some. A lot are already selected, the ones which are currently trusted by Ubuntu, which come when Ubuntu is installed. There's one at the top, which is this extra one, which is the one we want. And I'll press spacebar to mark this, that one. Tab to OK, so that that one will be added to the trusted list. That's updating. And when your web browser, including links, starts, it actually looks at that list. So again, we'll run links, access our web server using HTTPS, and it immediately goes to the web page. There's no error saying we don't trust the certificate. So that's the, the behavior we want. And we're complete. We've set up. Uh, Apache web server on our 192.168.2.22. We've created a certificate for an authority and set up the authority. We created a certificate for our web server and that was signed by the authority. Then we set up the configuration for Apache to refer to those certificates. And the last step for the client was to get our operating system on the client to be aware of the certificate authority certificate so that there were no warnings or errors. We now have HTTPS working 
uh, in our internal network. To finish off, one more thing, uh, testing. Uh, we can use links here to test. OpenSSL is a quite powerful piece of software. It has a way to test SS or HTTPS connections. So if you want to test, and I'll just make that bigger, there's the option of this S client, connect to example.com port 443. So this is saying use OpenSSL to connect to some server and this gives details of that connection, that secure connection. And it, if we scroll up a bit, we'll see that it shows us all the details about the certificate that was exchanged. That is, it, it was a certificate of www.example.com and it was issued by some certificate authority, CQ University. Uh, so we can see the details of the security exchange happening there, the details of the certificate, and the use of SSL or uh, more accurately TLS in there. So that's if you want to understand the protocol interactions with HTTPS. Then I control C to quit that. We've done a quick setup of uh, Apache. Uh, we haven't tried to explain too much about how certificates and RSA provide security. That is probably too much or outside of the scope of what we're trying to do of just setting it up but it's really beneficial if you can learn about RSA certificates and their security value to really understand what we've done in each of those steps.